Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing the uh, Vogelstein model of colorectal uh, carcinoma. So at the moment what I'm doing is I'm discussing the pathway in which KRAS is involved so that we can understand why a gain of function mutation in KRAS is going to cause an increase in uh, the uh, proliferation of the cell basically. Okay, so so far what we have seen is that KRAS is activated by having a GTP bound to it rather than a GDP and uh, it's activated upon uh, the cell being stimulated by growth factor uh, and well growth factors and when it's activated it activates the BRAF um, kinase and BRAF then um, phosphorylates the MEC um, protein um, and when MEC is phosphorylated, it becomes an active kinase as well, and it phosphorylates the mitogen-activated protein kinase, or the MAP kinase, which we will have, not in blue, we'll have it in this green colour, this turquoise colour. Right, okay, so here we go. So this denotes the MAP kinase, or the mitogen-activated protein kinase, which has a bunch of names, actually. So we'll go over some of these names, because they're very confusing how many names it has. So it's often referred to as MAP kinase. Uh, MAP kinase is what people usually call it. Uh, some people will refer to it as MAPK, especially when they're writing its name down on a piece of paper. In full, its name is the mitogen-activated protein kinase, the mitogen-activated protein kinase, okay, and there's another name uh, that can also give the same initials, basically. So, mitogen-activated protein kinase is one reason it's called the MAP kinase, but in fact, another reason that it's called that is that it can also stand for the microtubule-associated protein kinase. So this is the microtubule-associated protein kinase. Okay, so they're the same protein, basically. Don't get it confused. Protein kinase. And then finally, another name that this enzyme can all be given, all the same, uh, all the same referring to the same protein, but different names, is it can also be referred to as ERK, which stands for the extracellular signal regulated kinase. Extracellular signal regulated kinase. Okay, so it's got a lot of names which can all be used for this same protein, and that's part of what I think makes people find this pathway confusing, because if you type it in on Google and get up these pictures of these flowcharts, you will see loads of different flowcharts, and they're all calling these same enzymes different names, and it's like, what? Um, which one's right, basically? Are they referring to different pathways? And no, they're just using different names for the same things. Right, okay, so let's have a look now at what this uh, MAP kinase enzyme does once it's active. Well, one of the first things it does, it does two important things actually, so we'll refer to both of these. Okay, uh, so it's going to activate two transcription factors by phosphorylating them. So one of the important transcription factors it's going to activate is a MYC transcription factor. So it's going to phosphorylate and activate MYC transcription factors. Now MYC has a very grandiose title. It's often called the cell's most powerful mitogen. So it's very pro-growth, basically. Okay, and another transcription factor which it phosphorylates and activates is a transcription factor known as ELK1. Okay, right, so this is ELK1 being phosphorylated and activated. Now, I'm going to discuss ELK1 first because ELK1 is going to actually, isn't actually itself going to directly increase uh, the growth of the cell. Instead, what it's going to do is increase the transcription of another transcription factor, which is then going to increase the growth of the cell. So what we'll do is we'll look at that other transcription factor and then we'll reconverge it with MYC because both uh, MYC and this other transcription factor are going to increase growth. 
So, basically, what ELK1 is going to do is it's going to go and bind to the promoter region of a certain gene and increase the expression of that gene, basically. So, increase the probability that uh, the RNA polymerase enzyme is going to stick to, well, bind to that gene, uh, bind to that promoter region, and then uh, transcribe the gene. Okay, so let's say this is the gene for CFOS. Okay, CFOS gene here. Okay, right, so let me colour it in a certain colour. We'll have it in orange, I think. So here's the CFOS gene in orange. And now let's have the promoter region for the CFOS gene, just upstream of the CFOS gene, and we'll have that in pink. Okay, so basically, ELK1 is going to go and bind to the promoter region of this CFOS gene and increase the transcription of that CFOS gene. So you'll therefore get more mRNA for this CFOS gene, and therefore you will turn that mRNA into polypeptide, and you'll overall get more CFOS out. Okay, so CFOS level is going to go up. Now, CFOS alone is not actually a transcription factor, but it can dimerize with another, um, another transcription factor. Well, uh, a protein that by itself actually is a transcription factor, and the, together the two of them can become a tr another transcription factor. So CFOS on its own is not capable of being a trans. Um, a transcription factor. What it needs to do is it needs to dimerize with another protein called C Jun. And basically, when it binds to C Jun and you form this Fos Jun dimer, so let's show them together. So here is uh, C Jun and C Fos together. So this is C Jun with C Fos, basically. Uh, this C Jun Fos heterodimer, or just jun fos heterodimer, uh, this is basically a, a very powerful transcription factor, which is pro-growth. So it's going to help move the cell from the interphase into the, um, into the G1 phase of the cell cycle. Okay, right. So there's C fos in this turquoise color, and then we'll have C jun in this purple color. This is Sijun. Right, okay. So together they are a very powerful transcription factor which is pro growth. And seem and MIC up here is the, does the same basically. So through these two pathways, through uh, Jun Fos heterodimers and also through MIC, what you are going to get basically is the growth of this cell. So let's draw those two pathways converging like so. So it's going to cause uh, division of the cell. It's going to take the cell from the interphase into the first growth phase um, of the cell cycle. So you're going to begin the cell cycle, basically. Okay, so that's the um, MAP kinase ERK pathway. So, what were we originally talking about in the Vogelstein model of colorectal carcinoma? We were talking about um, getting uh, gain of function mutations in this protein KRAS over here. So, basically, again, just like all genes in the body, you have two genes coding for KRAS. Okay? So let's show them here. Right, so um, these are the two KRAS genes. Let's say this is a KRAS gene, and this is a KRAS gene. Now, we want to increase the function of KRAS. Now, if the function of KRAS goes up, it will continue to activate BRAF. BRAF will then activate MEC. MEC will then activate the mitogen-activated protein kinase, or the MAP kinase. And the MAP, kina MAP kinase will activate MIC and uh, Junfos heterodimers, which will then cause the cell to go from the interphase to the G1 phase of the cell cycle. So it will cause the cell to divide. So if we increase the function of uh, this KRAS um, protein, we're going to get overdivision of the cell, basically. Now, you need to increase the function of the KRAS uh, protein. So you're doing something very different from last time. Last time we wanted to completely remove the function of KRAS. This time you only need to increase it. So do you need a mutation in both genes? Absolutely not. You only need a 
uh, potentially a mutation in just one of them. So one gene needs to get a gain of function mutation, okay? Which will mean that overall, you, uh, the activity of this KRAS is increased. Now, what sort of mutations uh, can cause a gain of function in KRAS? Or potentially you could get amplification of the gene. So if you um, somehow manage to um, copy your gene so that you had an extra one maybe, let's say you put in another one next to it maybe, so you then ended up with three of these genes, then uh, you would make too much KRAS, and that would give you a too high function of KRAS. Or you could have some sort of mutation that means that once it's uh, got GTP bound to it, it doesn't actually ever remove the GTP. That would be another way. So you could actually have some mutation that means that it's permanently activated. So a mutation that alters the function of the actual protein that you're making. Um, so uh, another example would be one that doesn't need GTP to be bound to it in order to be active. Um, what other examples? Or you could, could get a mutation in the promoter, which means that you just produce far too much of it. So the promoter gets too high affinity for RNA polymerase, and then you transcribe the gene too much, create too much mRNA, create too much protein. So there are lots of different ways you can get a gain of function mutation in a protein. Uh, whatever the mechanism, KRAS function goes up. So you get a gain of function mutation in just one of the genes of KRAS. And this is what's important, that for this sort of a protein to get over proliferation, to, for it to have an effect, you only need a mutation in one of the genes. And the mutation you need is a gain of function. That means that KRAS is what's known as a, not a tumor suppressive gene, a proto-oncogene, okay? So a proto-oncogene is any gene within the human genome, which if you get a gain of function mutation in that gene, will lead to oncogenesis, will lead to the development of cancer. It makes you more likely to get cancer, okay? And indeed, once it gets that mutation, for instance, let's say this gene has got a gain of function mutation, it then becomes known as an oncogene. So a proto-oncogene becomes known as an oncogene when it has actually suffered a gain of function mutation and is now driving cancer. So KRAS, once it's undergone this gain of function mutation, is an oncogene now. Contrast that to what we saw before with these APC genes, where you needed to get loss of function of both of the genes in order to actually get um, oncogenesis. That means that ABC stops you from getting cancer, and you have to lose it in order to get cancer. So it is what is known as a tumor suppressor gene. Okay, so that's an important concept. So um, we've seen that uh, so far an example of a tumor suppressor gene, and now uh, we're having a mutation in a proto-oncogene, leading to it becoming an oncogene. So we've got a gain of function of KRAS, what is that going to cause? It's going to cause the cell to overdivide. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.